Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I would like to show you what I like to call the Instagram effect. I know in the Instagram application there's actually a few effects that you can choose from. Uh, I'm going to show you one that I, I use a lot for actually on websites and that sort of thing. Um, and it's not exactly the same as Instagram but it's one that I've kind of come up with in Photoshop and it's really easy to do and uh, and it makes you, it can uh, it can kind of enhance your images sometimes and not just leave them kind of flat looking okay so uh, what I want to what you want to do is open up your image in Adobe Photoshop I've chosen this image of uh, a golden retriever puppy which I'm kind of partial to as I actually own a golden retriever uh, something about me but uh, go ahead and open up that image in Adobe Photoshop and uh, go over to your layers palette to the right and if it's not there go up to window at the top and down to layers but it should be there by default and then uh, go ahead and click on that background layer and uh, you can drag it down into the new layers button or you can press control J on your keyboard but the point is we want to make a copy of that layer okay so uh, you can uh, you can take the visibility off that background layer if you want because we're not actually going to use it we're just going to keep it there so that we have an original that we can go back to if we make a mistake that uh, that we we need to start over okay so you can rename that uh, that copy if you want. I'm not going to because I don't really care right now. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is on that that copied layer, we're going to go ahead and double click on it, and we're going to uh, oh, that's going to open up your layer styles. Okay. So uh, what we want to do is we want to add an inner shadow. There's a couple ways that you can you can add this sort of effect. You could also do uh, an inner glow and uh, make it black but there's a few different options for either one and I kinda like the inner shadow better and that's kinda what this inner shadow is actually there for for this uh, this kind of technique so the first thing that we want to do I'll, I'll go ahead and just show you around a little bit in here um, I'm gonna leave most of these settings the same uh, but but the, go ahead and play around with these things so uh, the distance here the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it down to zero which is going to evenly place that uh, that shadow around the edge if you take the distance and you move it up it's going to offset the the shadow that you're you're making by this angle. So you can see there's a 30 degree angle, and that's uh, that's the offset that this distance is. Um, it's offsetting at a 30 degree angle by 59 pixels, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we're going to take that down to zero, so it's evenly placed around the outside. That means this angle is not really doing much anymore. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to make this size. We want to go up on the size. You can do whatever you want on this. I'm actually going to just go all the way up on this. Um, depending on the size of your image, you're going to want to uh, manipulate that a little bit differently. Okay, so if you take the the size up to whatever you need to to make this look good, um, that's what you got to do. Okay, then you can take the opacity or opacity. I always say that wrong. Okay, uh, <clears throat> but uh, you want to take that and you can move that up or down uh, to whatever you think looks nice too. Uh, if you change these uh, blend modes, you get sometimes a little bit of a different um, different look so if you wanted some sort of grungy look you could do a dissolve or something and then probably take the opacity down on that uh, on that so that it's not quite as uh, evident okay but uh, we'll go ahead and leave the multiply because that's the effect that we're going for okay uh, if you take the choke up it's going to uh, intensify the the outer edge and I'll just show you if you take the, the choke all the way up it gets rid of the blur so that's kinda what that does okay I'm gonna take the choke all the way down because I kinda like the way that this is looking okay and then we'll go ahead and press OK and then I'll apply that style to that uh, to that uh, picture now there's one thing that I want to show you before um, before we're done because that's essentially it uh, and actually I'll show you how to add a black border around it too but there's one thing that I want to show you it's that if you change the canvas size it's going to mess this up because that that uh, here I'll just show you. If you change the canvas size and proceed, that uh, you can see that that effect is not now applied to the edges of your image. And the reason for that is because if you press Control T on your keyboard, you'll see that your image and your layer is actually wider than uh, the canvas size. So it is still applied, but it's applied out on the outside of your canvas. So that's a mistake that you can make and uh, don't make it. So if you if you change your canvas size, you also need to change the size of that layer, or you need to make a new layer on top of this layer and apply the effect to that layer and add a multiply blend mode, so that um, so that that effect is applied to the size of your canvas and not the size of your layer, which is outside of the size of your canvas. Okay, 
Uh, that was a little bit confusing. If you run into this problem, please feel free to comment and I can help you out on that, okay? Okay, so I went I went to my history here and I went back a level so that uh, so that so that this is looking good. Again, uh, if your history if you need to do that yourself, you can go up to window down to history and you can go back to whatever step you need to in your history. Okay, uh, I'm going to quickly show you how to make a um, to make that background. And what I'm going to do, I think, is just uh, we'll, we'll use the we'll use the the marquee tool here. I think is what we want to do. Thought there was a rounded corner one. Uh, there's not. So what we're going to do is use a rounded corner rectangle tool. And I think what I'll do, yeah, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'll just use this rounded corner rectangle tool. So I'll go over to my tool palette and I'll click on the, the rectangle tool and I'm going to select the, the rounded corner rectangle tool. Okay, uh, set the radius uh, 10 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that. You can that's that's affecting how rounded your corners are. So you can change that to whatever you want, and you want to make this uh, about where you want your border to be. Okay, and I messed up. We need our border on the edge, all the way on the edge, so that we can still see that effect. But you'll still have your rounded corners. Okay, so I've uh, I've made that shape. It, ha it has the rounded corners and uh, and everything. You want to take that shape layer and drag it just below your uh, your doggy layer, because what you're going to do is you're now going to click on that uh, that uh, doggy layer with the effect on it, and you're going to right click on it, and say create clipping mask, and it's going to clip it to your shape. Now with uh, you want to select both of those two layers and shrink those down a little bit, so that. Uh, it just fits nicely inside of your canvas, okay? So press shift on your keyboard. Uh, oh, uh, I think I skipped a step here. So what you need to do is uh, click on both of those two layers, have them both selected. You can hold down shift to select both of those layers. And then you go up to edit down to free transform, or you can press control T on your keyboard to do a free transform, okay? And then press shift on your uh, keyboard and click and drag one of those uh, selectors on the side in a little bit okay and then uh, double click it to apply those settings and press uh, V to get your your move tool and just try to kind of center that up a little bit and it doesn't need to be perfect because as you know um, the Instagram border is sometimes offset a little bit so the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and click on that background layer or the bottom level layer that you have in your layers palette and just click click on make a new layer the reason that we clicked on the bottom one was so that it would be underneath everything that we've done so far. And I'm just going to call this layer black border. And with the black on the top, um, in our colors here, if it's not on the top, you can just click these arrows to switch it back and forth, okay? But put black on the top, select your paint bucket tool. If you see the gradient tool, click and hold on it, and you'll uh, see the paint bucket tool. And you can just do that. And click on the paint bucket tool. And on that new black border layer that we made, underneath all of the layers of the puppy and the shape, we're going to just apply that black, okay? And that makes your border, and we're done, okay? So I went kind of fast on some of this stuff to try to keep the video down uh, as, uh, as, um, as low as possible. But uh, if I've confused you, please feel free to comment, and I'll, I'll try to answer any of your questions. But uh, <clears throat> this effect is, uh, is looking pretty good, okay? So if you want to, um, if you want to make that effect even stronger, um, you can kind of up that choke in that in that layer in that uh, in your effects layer on this layer, or you can add, um, you can make a copy of this layer, uh, or uh, actually probably what would be better to do would be to um, make a new layer and apply that um, that effect to the new layer and uh, kind of. Um, kind of put it over the top of this one. Uh, and if I've confused you, I can help you work through it once again. But uh, if, if you liked this tutorial, please click like on YouTube. Please follow me on uh, Twitter and like me on Facebook. And uh, thanks for watching.